Hi everyone, welcome to today's webinar where we'll be showing you how you can use the new and upcoming features in Tableau to get real insights into your data. My name is Liz McCreish. I'm a Principal Business Intelligence and Analytics Consultant here at Theragood, and I've been using Tableau for over a decade. Okay, so what we're planning to cover today in the session is we'll give a quick introduction to Theragood, a high-level overview of the Tableau product suite, we'll demonstrate some of those new key new features, and we'll touch briefly on some of the other features that are on the Tableau roadmap. For those of you who aren't familiar with Theragood, we're a specialist business intelligence and analytics consultancy. We have a vast amount of experience delivering solutions right from helping to shape the initial scope and requirements through to delivery and support, as well as offering strategy services, analytics, and user adoption and empowerment programs. We're a global company with offices in New York, Philadelphia, Bangalore, Singapore, Sao Paulo, and I'm based in our London office. Our Tableau practice and partnership was started back in 2012. Since then, we've established Theragood as a member of Tableau's partner advocacy board. We've become a strategic alliance partner in the Alliance program, and were previously named Partner of the Year in Europe, Middle East, and the Africa region. Today, our focus is on Tableau, but we also partner with key vendors in the BI space and have experience of integrating Tableau with other technologies such as Salesforce, Teradata, Amazon Web Services, Azure, and many more. So some of you might already be familiar with the Tableau product suite, but for those who aren't, at a very high level, we've got Tableau Desktop, which enables you to create quite stunning visualizations very quickly to get some insights from your data. Tableau Server, which is a web-based platform that allows user collaboration and sharing of data. Tableau Online is a software as a service version of Tableau that is maintained by Tableau and, and held in the cloud. And Tableau Prep, which um, was brought into the suite earlier this year, which is a data manipulation tool. So it allows you to cleanse and combine data and before you do your analysis. So here I'm just showing you the Gartner Magic Quadrant for analytics and BI platforms that was released earlier this year. As you can see, Tableau is positioned in the leaders quadrant. One of the things just to be aware of though is when Gartner is setting the criteria for how their products are evaluated, there are a few strategic assumptions in there. So two of these four concentrated on the use of data catalogs and also the use of natural language querying. Now, these are two features that weren't in the version of Tableau at the start of the year or in 2018, but they are being addressed in the roadmap, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So some of these new features, in particular, the ones I wanted to highlight are the data catalog. So it provides things like data quality warnings, what fields are in use, uh, user permissions, some usage metrics, looks at the data lineage, and, and many more features in there as well. I think that's going to be a really strong feature for the next release. Ask Data has already been introduced in Tableau since um, version one of this year, but they've been adding more and more features and more richness to it with every release. So I think that's worth um, having a look at as well. And Explain Data is an AI-driven ability to suggest reasons why you're seeing unexpected values in your data, and we'll be demonstrating that as well. So here we are in Tableau Online. I'm just at the home page at the minute. And you can see I've got some recently used or viewed dashboards. I'm going to go into my sales dashboard. So here I've got some sales information, and I've just got a very simple view of the chart on front. So very typical Tableau functionality. I can filter and sort my data and interact with it. If I go up to the top here, I can look at the data sources that are underpinning my dashboard. I can see I've got two here. I've got World Indicators and Sample Superstore. If I go and look at the Sample Superstore, I can see some information about it, so I can see that Deb is the owner, but the deep patch has gone and certified that this data is fit for purpose and it's something I can use. But it's also opened up this Ask Data pane. And on the left-hand side here, you can see all of the different fields that I've got available. So if I hover over any item, it will give me some information about it, whether it's a text or numeric. If it's numeric, it gives me a distribution with some mins, max, and averages. You can see here with the sales metric, it's got a synonym called sold. I can go in here and I can edit that, and I can add some more synonyms in here. So if my users are coming in and want to start doing some reports, I can enable them to make it a lot easier and much more understandable for them in terms that they understand and use. So what the Ask Data feature allows me to do is, um, is basically just type in text to answer questions, and it will provide me with some Tableau visualizations to help answer those questions. So to start with, I'm going to say, what is sales? And you can see that it's fine that there is a metric called sales, 
and it will default to give me a sum of that. And I can select that. And now it's opened up a separate window for me, and it's given me my total sales figure for all the data that's in my data set. I can start to qualify that down, and I'm going to say um, in December 2018. And it's recognized that December is a date, and the date field that I have in my database is called order date. So it's saying, yes, do you want to use the order date? And I'm going, yes, I do. I can then break that number out. So I want to say by category. It's now giving me a simple visualization. And it's not just the actual dimensions or attributes that it can understand. If I type in Los Angeles, it's clever enough to realize that Los Angeles is a value in the city field. I'm going to allow me to filter just down to that particular city. Actually, what I want to do is do a focus across all cities, so I'm just going to remove that selection, and it will remove that filter, and I'm going to add in by city. And because I've introduced city into the mix, it's actually recognized that that's the geographical field, and it's changed my uh, visualization to be a map. But I can override that default view, and I'm actually going to change that to be a tree map. So hopefully you can see that's a very simple way of me interacting with the data just by asking, typing the questions. Another useful feature with this Ask the Data is we've got some usage analytics here. And what this does is it shows me what are the kind of queries or the questions that people have been asking on this data set using the Ask Data functionality. So I can see that we've had two users, myself and Deepraj, have been in here. We've asked a number of different questions, and we can see which are the most frequently um, set questions. And it might well be that we want to start building more visualizations on our dashboard that answer these questions so that they're available by default for people to work with. So I go back to my dashboard again. I just wanted to point out as well that that Ask the Data feature is also available from here. So I could just go directly into Ask Data and do the same functionality. There is a link here called Data Details, and this gives information about the data in terms of lineage, certification, content, etc. Unfortunately, one of the downsides of demoing a beta product is that this afternoon this feature has gone down for maintenance. But what I will show you is a screenshot from one of the demonstrations we did previously. So normally if I click Data Details, you can see on the right-hand side here I get information about my data set and the fields that are available. You might notice this little warning symbol here. If I click on that, what I can see is that Deb has gone in and said, actually, there's a data quality warning with this data set. So they must be doing some investigation on it. So I will hold fire and in kind of sharing any of my analyses with this data set until that's been resolved. At least that's very clear to me as an end user that we've got a problem here um, and it needs to be worked on. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to move on to Tableau Desktop. And here I've got a tree map that I've created, which is pretty similar to the ones that, the one that I actually generated using um, Ask My Data. And I'm going to show a new feature, which is called Explain Data, and how this can be used to quicken the amount of time taken for me to perform analysis on my data set. In the tree map here, I've got it shaded so that the darker color is the um, highest amount of sales. So we can see the technology in Los Angeles is, is quite high, as is the New York office supplies. Normally, if I wanted to do some deep dive analysis on this data set, I would limit to my set of data here, and then I would start looking at my different attributes to try to understand what's driving that high, high amount of sales. Is it my categories? Is it subcategories? Is it particular orders, particular customers, segments, etc.? But rather than having to do that, we've now got this new feature. I can do right-click, explain data. Tableau is actually using Bayesian statistical methods to generate explanations. It will go through lots of potential explanations, evaluate the one which seems most likely, and then will give us a little visualization. It's telling me that the subcategory of phones has got a very high percentage of sales compared to the average. And that's something then I can go and, and have a look at and do some more deep dives with the phones in technology in Los Angeles. I'm just going to have a look and see if I can get anything interesting from New York office supplies. Again, I'm going to do explain data. So I've picked up a few things which I know, logically speaking, aren't going to give me any insights. It's in New York City, which is in New York, which is in the region. But this looks quite interesting here. So it's saying it's got a single extreme value. So one of them is increasing the sales by an exponential amount. And it's given me a, a simple little visualization here to show what that distribution looks like and what the impact is. So if we excluded that extreme value, what would the level of sales actually look like? And I can see as well, I've got some detailed information here about the, the record. And it's the customer, Doug Jacobs. And I can see information about that order. So I actually want to save this and share this with the manager. 
So I'm just going to open up my visualization. And what this will allow me to do is to actually take the visualization that it's generated. I'm just going to add the customer name on as a label so I can quickly see who that offending one is. And I'm just going to change my color coding as well. So I'm just going to make that really pop and stand out. So now I can see if this visualization, I can share it with the manager in, in New York and get him to go and have a look at this underlying data. It could well be this is the data quality issue that Deb had flagged earlier, or it could be that we've just had a, a really uh, big sale come in, but I'd like to get him to go and check that out. So it's a very quick way for me to see any anomalies within my data, save those visualizations, and share it with colleagues. So just a few other items I wanted to highlight, really, were some of the other features that came in earlier this year. As the data we've already touched upon, the Azure Data Warehouse native connectors, this will mean there'll be much better performance than just using generic connections back to Azure Data Warehouse. The mobile app is a much nicer interface and way of working. The Tableau Prep conductor, you can build in Tableau Prep and then schedule to run on the server, Tableau server. Finally, something that a lot of our customers have been asking for for quite a while, is the ability to export to PowerPoint. So we've been focused on some of the some of the upcoming features, but I've just put up just very briefly a list of all the different features that are that are coming up in the next beta release. I know we did a deep dive on, on three of them. A couple more I think it's just worth calling out really. This deployment tool. So for anyone who's in the IT side of things, this will make it much easier to deploy Tableau across different environments. The native connector for Databricks, again, this will mean um, the native connector gives you much better performance. We're seeing a real increase in our customers within the use of Databricks. And if you do want to learn more about that, we do have on-demand webinars available introducing the key concepts for Databricks. We've picked a few of our favorites. But as you can see from the previous slide, there are a lot of different features coming out. So thank you very much for your time.